morning, church. Fantastic just uh, to be with you this morning. I trust that uh, you settled in nicely with uh, a couple of me and that you in your living rooms wherever you might be to share this uh, service with us. We want to particularly welcome you among us this morning. No matter uh, who you are, in fact, or where you are on this life's journey, we invite you to, to come with your, with your gifts, with your, with your joy, with that to your pain, your hope, your fears. We invite you to come with the traditions that have maybe helped you. Um, some of us may be one that even have been with you. We invite you to come with your experiences that have made you, perhaps even broken you. We invite you to come with a mind that is ready to engage, with a heart that is open to the same. And also invite you to come and to listen to the Spirit of the Lord as He calls you to uh, love your neighbor wholeheartedly, as um, He calls you to seek justice and to create peace and to practice compassion. And so we say to you this morning, welcome. Come and join us. And uh, we would love to have you to connect with us this morning as we worship God together. I'm really excited actually as we start a new series this morning. You know, it's always good to be going to a series because it just roots you and establishes you. It gives you a real sense of foundation on something that you preach to you. This morning we started a new series and it's on the I Am Sayings. Gene is going to be uh, giving us sort of an introductory to that, uh, to the I Am Sayings this morning. And finally, um, whatever, whatever comes out of this, I know these. It'll be good for you to be with us, uh, to join with us in uh, that AGM also. So I think as far as announcements go, that's really just about all that I want to announce other than to say, as of today, we have also um, opened the building up to uh, the back hall for anybody who would like to join us in the service. So they get to sit and be part of the service in the back hall. It's projected up onto the screen. They can't be in the same room with us, but uh, they can sit and be part of the service there and uh, sort of just engage in that manner. Interestingly, uh, nobody has taken us up on that offer today. And as I say that, John's just having a little bit of a chuckle to himself. Uh, we definitely thought we would have a couple of takers. But uh, again, I guess people are just feeling their way through this one and trying to discern what is the right thing and the wrong thing to do or just to be comfortable. So Again, just a reminder that that is available to you from, uh, from now to make contact with John if you're wanting to pre-book. You need to pre-book uh, a seat if you're wanting to come and do that so that we prepare to receive you in the best possible way to ensure your safety and to, to ensure that it's uh, the best experience that you can have. So um, be in contact with John if you'd like to be part of that uh, on a Sunday morning. And I think that's about it as, as far as announcements are concerned. I'm going to just pray for us. And then after that prayer, we're going to, John's going to take us into a link, which we've been doing with regard to our testimonies. And there's another testimony this morning that we're going to share together. Uh, and we're then delighted for, for Patrick and Helen and Cassidy to share uh, with us in, in leading us through our worship. And I really pray that you would be blessed as, um, as you listen to that, the worship this morning. Paddy's again going to be using that song, Graves into Gardens, a beautiful song that I think um, he's wanting to teach and to reinforce. Uh, the words are amazing. So if you don't know the song, um, learn it, but focus on those words, which are tremendous words, and be encouraged through them. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you again for the opportunity for us to be church gathered albeit in uh, different locations. Father, we're part of that worldwide sort of church. 
And we come again this morning to exalt you, to lift you up. And Lord, we pray that you would be found in this place this morning. That the Spirit of God would just reside upon us as we are here today. Father, we pray that we would worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, that we would, in our daily lives, that we would seek to imitate God, as Ephesians says. To live a life of love just as Christ loved and gave, up, gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering. Father, that we too would live as children of the light. So Father, we ask that you would be blessed in this time of worship this morning. For we pray this in your mighty name. Amen. Thanks, John. Hi there. Uh, behind the camera, it's Mark here. Usually on a Sunday, we have a testimony slot. And I've asked a couple of people to share testimony this morning. The camera's pointing at Raymond. Now, Raymond was the first one to give a testimony when we started doing this during lockdown. Raymond gave a testimony in May but that was when we were using Zoom and with a lot of technical problems, a lot of it got cut out. So I've asked Raymond to share it briefly this morning again. I'm also going to ask Robert, who will come up in a minute, to share. Uh, the church will not know Robert's face, um, but uh, both Raymond and Robert, who you will hear soon, I'll introduce Robert in a minute, uh, have uh, come to the place where God has told them to get involved with Westwood uh, during this period of lockdown, and uh, we should be encouraged with what God's doing. But first of all, Raymond, would you quickly share and update us with where things are at with you? Good morning, Church. Good to speak to you again after uh, the first time round. It was a lot of technical difficulties, and I don't know how clear my message was um, last time. So yes, uh, it's good to have another chance to speak with you this morning. Um, just to uh, put you in the picture briefly um, where I am in my walk with God. Um, I am a Christian of Dunalpha and I used to be uh, heavily involved with the Church of Scotland right up until the start of this year. I realised this year um, I wanted to grow my faith, I wanted to grow um, I suppose deeper as a disciple um, and, and just get to know God a bit more. Um, so I, I left the Church of Scotland background, left that um, behind and decided I was going to find a new church just at the time when all the churches closed. So I went from wanting to find a new church to I couldn't go to a church, um, which left me feeling a bit uh, bewildered, a wee bit lost uh, and a bit despair. Then um, I think everybody felt that during lockdown, the kind of despair, the worry, um, and the fear that was gripping the nation. Um, uh, the thing that got me through that was my home group. Um, I was involved in the home group here at the Baptist Church. Um, and during that time, we shared lots of messages with each other. We encouraged each other every day. Um, and we just shared our own sort of highs and lows each day um, amongst the home group, um, which really encouraged and really helped and helped me get through the difficult times. It helped me the days when I was down uh, and I felt I was able to contribute days when other people were down. Um, but it was definitely that close bond of the family that drew me together, uh, drew me closer um, into the Westwood Baptist Church family. Um, and now I'm looking forward to when the world opens up a wee bit and next year, hopefully being able to take part in life here at the church. Thank you, Raymond. Um, just so that we adhere to social distancing, I've got a second seat laid out and Raymond will move on and Robert will come up. Let me tell you a wee bit about Robert. Prior to lockdown, Robert had no association with church. He's had a profound experience of God during lockdown uh, made contact with us as a church and since then has been through the Alpha course and is involved with one of our home groups 
And uh, enough from me. Robert, do you want to share your story? Good morning, everyone. I hope you're well in these difficult times. Uh, my experience uh, I had was when I was working from home early on in the pandemic, and uh, God made his presence known to me. Uh, so at that point, I decided to explore that, and uh, I looked up the Westwood Baptist Church online and uh, seen a video uh, that Mark had done, and it was a reading uh, from the Bible. I really enjoyed the reading that Mark had done and decided to pursue that further and I phoned Mark and uh, Mark put me in touch uh, with the Alpha course and uh, done the Alpha course, that was in uh, July of this year and I had a really thoroughly enjoyed the Alpha course, uh, meeting the different people from the church on there, it was a great experience and also the testimonies and the videos uh, that were in the, in the Alpha course as well. Um, since then I've joined the home group as well which is on uh, a Tuesday every second week and I uh, thoroughly enjoy taking part in the, the home group as well uh, because it teaches about the Bible and different verses in the, in the Bible which has been great for my learning as well in my Christian journey. Um, there's also uh, another course coming up I believe uh, it's a Bible course on the Monday night uh, that, that Jean's promoted so I'm thinking about doing that as well. So folks, be encouraged. Uh, God is at work even in this lockdown period. Thanks to Raymond and to Robert. God bless you. Bye. You 
turn bones into army You turn seas into highways You're the only Infinite wisdom Who can fathom 
Thanks very much, uh, really appreciate that. Uh, we start a new series, and uh, I'm going to put this whole new series into context. And I don't know whether you've ever thought something, but because of the circumstances, haven't quite got the whole picture. Now, Andy and I were reminiscing this week, and we were thinking about holidays, and. Andy was thinking about a holiday when he was 15 or 16, and he and a friend decided to hitchhike down to Devon. I think there was a girl involved. And when they set off, they eventually hitchhiked and they got to Bude. Now, it was dark when they got to Bude, and resourceful boys that they were, they found a nice flat field and set up their tent. However, in the morning, when they looked out, they were surprised to see a flower bed. And then there was a sign that said, library. I don't know how quickly they cleared up and moved on, but uh, they must have had a bit of surprise. And do you know what? Over the history of the world, it's a bit like this. Light has been shed on who God really is. And in the first chapter of the Bible, we have Adam and Eve, and they're walking in the garden, talking and just sharing things with God. And there was no sin in the world. There was no separation. And then, as we move on, we, we learn more about God. And I think it's when we get to heaven at the end, we're really going to know who he is. So, uh, we move on. And we're going to look at Exodus 3 today. And it's a great story which we're going to do, and the context, which most of you will know, is that you had a baby who was um, a Hebrew, and he was living in Egypt. Now, at that time, the pharaohs decided there were too many Hebrew slaves, and they said, let's just kill all the baby boys, throw them into the River Nile, and that will solve the increase in the population, and in case they rise up against us. So baby was put in the bulrushes to hide, hide him for three months um, from any of these things happening to him. But God had a plan, and Pharaoh's daughter came along. Pharaoh's daughter couldn't resist him, said, I'm going to adopt you as a son, took him home to the, the palace, and he was brought up as Pharaoh's grandson, and he was taught the ways of the court, and he was taught how to lead and many things, and he was there for 40 years until he saw a Hebrew slave being killed. And at that point, he got really angry and he killed the slave driver. Now, Pharaoh was going to find out about this, so he runs away into the desert. And when he gets into the desert, he meets the Jethro, the priest of Mizian. And he stays there for a while falls in love with his daughter, gets married, settles down for the next 40 years with his father-in-law looking after the sheep. And at 80 years old, he thinks, well, I'm settling for a quiet life. However, God had other plans. And let's read the story, shall we? It's from Exodus 3. Now, Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire within a bush. 
Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it didn't burn up. So Moses thought, I'll go over and see what this strange sight is, why the bush does not burn up. When God saw that he'd gone over to look, God called him from within the bush. Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hittites and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be a sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? What shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. So, out in the wilderness, although Moses didn't realize it, God was preparing him, giving him a great training for what was ahead. He also had a training in the past, so he had a training in the desert. He knew how to do survival, he knew where the water holes were, he knew where to feed sheep, and knew how to survive in a sandstorm, all that kind of thing. And then, of course, his early life had taught him how to behave in Pharaoh's court, uh, how to lead people, and although he didn't realize it, these difficult times were actually preparing him to lead the Hebrews through the wilderness after 400 years of slavery. Just a little point from that. Uh, during this pandemic, we are um, in difficult wilderness times, some of us, some of us emotionally. Um, I hear sad things nearly every day just now of things that have happened or are happening. Uh, there's, there's just so much sadness and difficulty around. And in the middle of there, you know, how is God dealing with us? How is he helping us cope with that? And I've got a few points to bring out from this, but one is how we deal with these things might be a preparation for what he wants to do with us out of lockdown. We won't be here forever. And I suggest, why don't you talk to him? not only about what's going on just now, but also talk to him. In what ways can this wilderness experience be a preparation for what he wants for you? Prepare your hearts. And just remember that Moses was 80 when 
he was called. Some of you might be young, some of you might be more than 80, but God might have a plan for you, so just, just pray into that. So, back to the burning bush. Moses sees this bush burning away in the distance and goes to have a look. Now, it's not unusual for certain bushes to spontaneously combust in that heat. And he just goes to have a look. However, this is a wee bit different. He said, that's funny. It's not sort of burning up like bushes usually do. Then, once God had Moses' attention, he spoke to him. Told him not to come any closer. Take off his sandals. For it was holy ground. And then he let Moses know who he was. He was the God of his father and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And all he could do was hide his face. And then he goes on to explain why he's come. Do you know what? Sometimes it's people want God to speak to them. But I think sometimes we've got to give him our attention in order to hear him, give him that space, come into that holy ground. Just a point. But God says to him, firstly, and we slide on that, I think, I've seen the slaves' sorrows. It's an encouragement to know that God sees our sorrows, even when they're private to us. And many of our sorrows are private to us. And in this country, it's to do with friends and family and situations and things like that. But I was reading today that of all the persecuted Christians in the world, eight, there was a, well, eight, of persecuted believers in the world, 80% are Christians. And this year, it, according to Open Doors, 260 million Christians around the world will be persecuted for their faith. And I was thinking that the, uh, the Egyptians, but I also thought it was relevant to many people today, and that God sees their sorrows, sees your sorrows, but sees what's going on around the world. And then he says, I have heard their cry. And he's not deaf to our prayers. And he wasn't to, to Moses's, he wasn't to the Egyptians, and he's not to yours and mine. And it might not be the answer right away that we want, but try praying. There's some books at the door um, you could pick up that are called Try Praying, and it's a wee experiment on prayer to see if prayer really works. And I think you'll be surprised um, what you find out. And finally, he says, I have known. I have come down to deliver them and fulfill my promises to them. And it's going to take them to this promised land, the land that was promised to Abraham, and he was going to lead them. Now, I don't think he just said, okay, Lord, I'll just do what you want. I would have, he starts off and he says, who me? Who me? And I think that's a suitable response. Um, and I think maybe some people who are listening today, things God, God wants you to do things. And you might say, who me? But he says, yes to you. Yes to you. So just ask him about that. And uh, he does see that persuading the Israelites and Pharaoh might be a, a major obstacle. So he, he asks the question. Moses then asks, who shall I say sent me? Now, this seems a strange thing to say, but previously, um, people referred to God as an attribute. And I put a few up on the screen. It might be El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty. El Roy, the God who sees. Elion, Lord Most High. And these attributes describe God's nature. And he was just asking, which one of these shall I say? Shall I say it's Elroy, the God who sees? 
or El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty? But he gets a, quite a different answer. And the answer is quite different. He didn't say names like um, Paddy or Helen or Greg or Cassidy. It's a completely different one. And I don't know whether you've ever done a foreign language. And uh, one of the first things you learn is to be. I am, he is, she is, je suis, tu es, il est, elle est, that kind of thing. And when he says, I am, you think, that's to be, I am. And uh, when it's translated into the, to the Hebrew, um, well, in Hebrew, it might be Yahweh. Uh, and it means, I am who I will be, Yahweh, Lord. And if you were a, a pious Jew, you wouldn't say the name Yahweh. You would miss out the um, vowels, or consonant, well, vowels in it, and you would just have the capital letters. And in the, many uh, Jews wouldn't say the Yahweh. They would say Adonai or um, other terms for God rather than that. But the term Yahweh in the Bible is only used of God. If you used other words... They would be um, also referred to humans like uh, Lord Farquhar. Wouldn't be in the Bible, but in Shrek. But you know, you would you would be a sort of human name. Uh, but if it's Lord, it's spelt in your Bible with L capital, O capital, R capital, D capital, and uh, it, it's way beyond the human. And he's saying to the Hebrews, I will be what you need me to be to get you out of this situation. I will be what you need. I will be what you need. And it's not just saying he's going to be our slave and answer prayers and do what we want and that kind of thing. It's, I will be what you need to fulfill my purposes. I believe God wants us to know that too, that through these difficult times, that he will be what each one of us needs us to be for what's now and ahead. And it's not just to, to be what I need for my own comfort, though he does give us that, but it's to be what he wants us to be, to be what he wants us to be. So as we, as we seek him, the great I am, he will give us what we need. Another thing about I am, it's uh, because God simply is. There was never a time when he didn't exist, and there's never a time when he will not exist. In fact, scientists say time was created at the Big Bang. And what before the Big Bang? God, the creator of the universe. And he was there when he said, let there be light but he'll also be at the end there too for his followers. The next big illumination, and that was when Jesus came. Jesus called himself throughout his life, he called himself, I am. I am. And that was one of the reasons why he was killed. It was blasphemy to the Jews. And it's a name he used many times. And what we're going to do over the next few weeks, we're going to look at some of these. I am the bread of life, the door, the good shepherd, the resurrection and the life, the way of the truth and the life, and the vine. And we'll be looking at these claims. Jesus said lots of things about himself. But he said, unless you believe... I am, you will die in your sins. And in John 8, 58, before Abraham was, I am. That's some claim. And one of the I am stories that I think is uh, really powerful is when Jesus was arrested in Gethsemane, uh, the various troops and folks come up to arrest him and they 
He says, are you looking, am I the one you're looking for? You, no, sorry. They say, are you Jesus who we're looking for? And he stands up and he says to them, I am he. And the power of those words knock all the troops backwards onto the ground. It was him showing the power of those words, the power of those words. He was there when God said, let us create, and he'll be there at the end. A couple of thoughts just to finish off. Uh, How well do you know this great I am, Lord in capital letters? Is he Lord in capital letters of your life? Raymond and Robert were working on it, and so are many of us on that journey. If you want to join the journey, why not just ask him to be Lord of your life? And for those of us on the journey, in what ways can we make him L-O-R-D in capital letters? The I am who is with us. And for some of you, a philosophical thought to ruminate on after you've had your lunch. C.S. Lewis said in chapter 15 of the Screwtape Letters that the present is the point at which time touches eternity. I wonder how relevant that is to the I am. You might have to run that back again and listen to it. I'm quite encouraged by what's written in 1 Corinthians 13. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am fully known. I'm looking forward to that. The God who was there at the beginning of creation and the end of the creation wants me to join him in heaven. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that the great I am that created this world wants a part in human life Thank you for the Bible story. Thank you for the the way you sent Jesus, the I am, to be with us, to lead us, and to show us how to find forgiveness and restoration with you. And thank you that you're the great I am at the end of time. And Father, we'd ask that you'd Help each one of us to go on that journey of making you L-O-R-D, the I am, the present in our lives. Amen. Thank you. Wrong way.
do you wish that you could see it all with me? We do. It's all creation groaning. It is. It's a new creation coming. It is. It's the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst. It is. And is it good that we remind ourselves of things?
Is he worthy? Yes, he is. For he is the name that is above every other name. And Father, we praise you for you are worthy. We give you thanks again for the God that you are, the great I am. And Lord, I pray that those I am sayings over the next number of weeks will just be a, such a real reinforcement of the character of God. Lord, that they would deeply enrich and encourage our lives. 
So we give you thanks again, Lord. This morning, I'm just going to close with a prayer of St. Benedict that says, O gracious and holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord bless you and be with you as uh, you go into the rest of this day. We trust that you've set yourself up well for the remainder of whatever is to come. Bless you for the weekend. Amen. <laughs>